Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Business Process Catalog, Part 5, Authoring Business Process Patterns and Use Cases. My name is Philip Mewson, and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live Event. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Rachel Profit, Principal Program Manager. Rachel, over to you to get us started. Thanks, Philip, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm excited for part five of our Tech Talk series, all about the business process catalog and guidance. Like Philip said, today is part five, which is all about how we author business process uh, patterns and user stories. Again, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Rachel Profit, and I've included a QR code here on the right-hand side of the screen that will take you right to my LinkedIn page if we're not already connected. But I do invite you to connect with me in whatever way works best for you. My email is rachel.profit at microsoft.com. You can find my blog at dynamics365lady.com. Connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn at Rachel Profit. Or check out my YouTube channel at Dynamics365 Unboxed. Again, this is the fifth part in a large series of tech talks that are going to dive into details. This is the first time you're seeing this, but we have officially added three new um, Tech Talks into our series. So be on the lookout for the registration links for those um, in the next few days. Um, but we've already done parts one through four, which really dove into like an overview of the Guidance Hub, how to use the catalog. We also took a look at how to um, import that catalog into Azure DevOps. Last week, we took a look at how to author an L3 business process article. And in today's session, we're really going to be focusing in on L4 business process patterns. Coming up next month and in March, um, we are going to have some additional tech talks that are about how to conduct process-centric discovery. We're also going to do an introduction to process governance. And then we haven't selected a date yet, but we're also going to do a session that's on authoring reference architectures. We also are in the process of planning out a series of tech talks that will go along with this for each of our 15 end-to-end -end business processes. So keep an eye out for those as well. Taking a quick look at the agenda for today's session, we're going to start out by taking a look at how to identify a process and select a process that you would like to author. Then we'll walk through the structure of of a pattern and how to write the when to use this pattern section of an article. We'll also talk about how we author the solutions for a pattern and we'll describe any issues and considerations and give you some tips and tricks for writing that issues and considerations section. We'll also talk about how you can use examples in your patterns. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to start out by identifying like what is a business process pattern and how um, you can find these um, to be authored and find them in our guidance. So a business process pattern is a specific use case, user story, or way of doing a particular business process. If you recall from part four of our Tech Talk series, we talked in detail about what a business process is remembering that it's a specific set of tasks that leads to an outcome that meets um, a specific objective. And so the pattern is the specific way of doing something. We've already identified more than 2,000 patterns in our uh, business process catalog, but we expect this number to grow significantly and we want to need your help um, to make this happen. So um, we want you to contribute to that list and I'm going to be demonstrating for you how to do that. Um, and we, it's some things that we would like you to help uh, contribute to this are industry specific patterns or ISV specific patterns. The process for submitting to the catalog, if you'd like to make a change um, or have a new row added to the catalog, it's simple. Uh, we've broken it down into three basic steps. You're going to visit aka.ms forward slash business process catalog requests. Then you'll create a catalog request on the issues tab. And once you've uh, created that GitHub issue, it will go through an approval process here on the back end. 
at Microsoft with some fancy Power Automate flows that we have that run. And then you'll receive notification or, uh, you know, the owner of the area might reach out to you if they have additional questions. Um, and we'll let you know if it's been approved and when that new item would be uh, published. There are, we've put included a few examples of the different types of patterns that you might uh, submit to add and help us build up our catalog. The first one is industry specific patterns. So for example, if there's a different way of doing something in the retail industry or the manufacturing industry or the healthcare industry, you could submit three patterns uh, for the same process. Um, to indicate those three different ways. You can also submit patterns that include app source apps. So we have a robust and rich, um, you know, catalog of apps uh, that are built by ISVs and uh, solution implementers available out at appsource.microsoft.com. And any of those apps that are built um, on top of Dynamics 365 or with Dynamics 365 can be included. And so they oftentimes enrich or enhance the way a particular business process can be uh, executed. And so that's another example. Um, other examples of patterns that you might submit are uh, when there's more features or a different way of achieving a specific process. Um, and those could even be things that like a country or region code um, that changes the way the functionality works um, in the software, as an example. When you want to create a new pattern, we've got some guidelines on how you would name that pattern. We always want you to start with a verb. This list here of verbs is not like the complete uh, list of possible verbs, but these are examples of active verbs like set up, manage, create, or migrate. On the right hand side, you can see a screenshot. This is an excerpt that comes from the business process catalog. Uh, these are all patterns of creating a sales order in the order to cash um, area. So you're going to start with that verb and then you're going to describe the process. So, you know, the, the first example you see in the screenshot on the right is convert a sales quotation to a sales order. And then we've included the product name in sales or in supply chain management. So those are the two different products that we offer that support that same process. And so there's variations, obviously, in the steps and the way this would work. Um, if you also have an industry or an app source product, you would include those in your title as well. And they would go in that sequence. Um, so not likely that you're going to have a Dynamics 365 product name and industry and an app source product. It's typically probably going to be one or the other, but you would include the industry or the app source product after the Dynamics 365 product name. So what I want to do is uh, switch over to my browser and do a quick demonstration for you of how this process works. Okay, so I am uh, in my browser and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to aka.ms forward slash business process catalog requests. This will bring you to the page that you see right here. And this is an example uh, where you can see the full list of all of the requests that have been submitted. We do always encourage you to search to make sure that somebody else hasn't already submitted that. If somebody has submitted it and you would like to kind of upvote that or give some additional comments to it, you know, you can certainly click on an existing request that is out there. Um, and I've got an example of a catalog request here that has been submitted. So uh, this example here is use a power up app to report injury or illness. And so if you wanted to type additional comments on this, you simply click on that link, type in those comments, and then you're ready to go. I'm going to go back to the issues list by clicking on the issues tab. And what I'm going to do is click on the new issue button and walk you through the process of creating a new issue. So once you're on the um, new issue page, you're going to see a list of the different types of requests that you can make. To request changes to the catalog, you're going to use the very first one, which is called business process catalog change request. 
and I'm going to click on the get started button over to the right hand side to use this one. It will prefix the title with the word catalog in square brackets for you. And then what you'll do is type in the name of your particular request um, or what you want that, that row to be called. So uh, this is where you would type in the name. And then you're going to put in your contact information. So I'll enter my email address, indicate that I am a Microsoft employee. I'll select which end-to-end -end process this relates to. So let's just say that this is going to be related to um, design to retire. And then you can indicate which business process area this relates to. So from the catalog, that would be the level two um, in, in the catalog. Um, it defaults a value in there as an example. You should copy and paste that value exactly. Then you can also indicate which business process it would be related to, and then the name of the pattern you want it to be. You can also type in those additional comments, and then you'll need to mark the checkbox at the bottom to agree to the code of conduct. And once you've entered in all of those required fields, then and only then will you be able to click the submit new issue. You can also add labels, projects, or milestones on the right-hand side to your issue requests, but it's not required. So let's switch back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And what I wanna do now is talk a little bit about what is a pattern for? Patterns are designed for new consultants or business analysts that are learning about business applications, or it could be existing business consultants or business analysts who are looking for best practice or expanding their skill sets into other areas of the software. It can also be useful for customers who are deciding or evaluating which way to implement a particular feature. If you're a consultant helping a customer in this process, then the information included in these articles should help guide a customer um, as to which technique should be used or which products should be used to meet the business requirements. These articles should be written at a level 400 and describe a specific way of setting up Dynamics 365 in order to achieve the objective. Each of these articles should include that scenario for when to use the pattern. And you can think of that as the why for a particular uh, business process, user story, use case, whatever you might want to call it. We use those words interchangeably. And the purpose of this article and the content that you'll find inside of it should provide considerations and best practices for implementing that specific way of doing it, along with all of the technical information for implementing that per particular feature. It could include specific steps um, or values that need to be included in a specific parameter to meet the objective or that specific scenario. But many of the steps are could be just generic and point you to the product documentation on how to create a sales order or how to create a customer um, as one of the steps in the overall process. So in general, we try to keep the steps generic, but anywhere that there's a specific value that's required to meet the pattern, user story, et cetera, we would want to include those detailed steps in our procedures or solution that we provide. This slide we talked about in our last Tech Talk, but I wanted to review it again because I think it's really relevant to the authoring of patterns. So business processes and steps or patterns have a unique um, kind of position like when we use one versus the other. On the left-hand side, we have examples of business processes such as create a sales order, hire employees, create a purchase order, create a customer, create a vendor. Obviously, this is not a comprehensive list. Level three in the business process catalog um, has, you know, like seven to 800 of these identified. When you're looking at uh, whether or not your step or pattern, like if it should be a pattern or a step in a business process, we've got some examples and considerations. So for example, adding lines to a sales order is a step in the create a sales order business process. Creating a sales order with a miscellaneous charge could be an example of a pattern, or it could be a decision step 
in the create a sales order business process, as an example. The deciding factor for that is really up to the author uh, based on the scenario. So like if creating sales orders with miscellaneous charges is a very frequent normal step or process that's used in an organization, for example, and most of the time you would do this, you could add that as a decision step. But if there's multiple ways or reasons or uh, scenarios where you might create a sales order with a miscellaneous charge, that's where you might create it as a pattern instead. Another example that I want to discuss is like the example of creating purchase order lines by using product categories. So that's an example of a pattern. Um, and there's a specific use case or situation where you would use a product category rather than an item on the line of a purchase order. Another example that would be a pattern is our last example here, which is creating a patient account. This is an example of a specific industry pattern that would be used in the healthcare industry. So in this case, right, uh, the name of the pattern is create a patient account, and that is just a pattern of creating a customer. Um, we don't consider that to be a different business process. It's a pattern of creating a customer. We've also included um, another slide here that talks about the difference between a pattern and a reference architecture. Um, one of our next Tech Talks, part eight in our series, is going to talk a little bit more about reference architectures and where they're used. But a pattern addresses a specific challenge in an implementation and it's based on a specific use case or scenario or best practice. It can also be industry specific, um, but it should still be addressing the specific challenge on a specific scenario. A reference architecture, on the other hand, acts as a core architecture with a common solution that can apply to many scenarios. So when we think about patterns, the solution is typically embedded directly into the application, whereas a reference architecture, it would typically be used for an integration to an external solution. When we write a pattern, it would include high-level process steps of how to achieve that, like specific values that might need to be selected along with the high level steps to achieve the process. Whereas a reference architecture is going to include an architecture diagram and instructions on how to install um, that particular solution. So if you're interested in offering a new business process pattern, um, we've outlined the steps for you into five easy steps. And so you'll want to get started by downloading our catalog at aka.ms forward slash business process catalog. There you can filter and identify the pattern that you would like to author. If the pattern you want to author doesn't exist in the spreadsheet, um, then it's important that you need to go back to the, the process, the demonstration that I just did a few minutes ago um, and put in a request to have that pattern added first. Once the pattern is added, then you can go ahead um, and create the request. And so you're gonna check the GitHub issue list to make sure somebody else is not already authoring that. You'll create that issue request, which um, I'll walk you through and wait for approval. And then you're gonna make a copy of our template, which is available at aka.ms forward slash business process catalog template. Then you can start to author your document. And when you're done authoring the document, you can submit it at aka.ms forward slash business process catalog submit. So we hope that these AKA links make it very easy to navigate and find and get to the pages that you need to go to in order to execute this process. So what I'd like to do is switch over and walk you through a quick demonstration of this process. All right, so I'm back in um, my browser and I actually want to start by opening up the business process catalog. If you don't have the business process catalog downloaded, you can download that by navigating to aka.ms forward slash business process catalog. Make sure that you're always using the most recent version. Um, right now, the most recent version is the December 2023, but we will be publishing a new version very soon. So keep an eye out for that as well. Once you're in the catalog, you can use the filters at the top of the spreadsheet to filter down to specific 
types of verticals or specific end-to-end -end processes. So for example, if I wanted to author an article in the design to retire area, I can filter for that end-to-end -end process. And what we're looking for is a a, a value in column E. So let's say I wanted to write an article about trade agreements, which are, you know, a, a type of pricing setup that we use in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. Uh, so if I wanted to write that article about viewing trade agreements by customer, um, that's the example I want. I'm going to go ahead and copy that value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to my um, issues in my GitHub repository. Again, if you want that AKA link, it's aka.ms forward slash business process catalog requests. That will take you into the page where you can see all of those requests. Then I can paste in the name of the pattern that I am looking to author. Um, I don't see it there. So, you know, I, I might um, delete that. You could try just smaller versions of this. Uh, like just by typing in trade agreements. I don't see it there. You can also double check by using the label filters. So if I know that I'm looking for something in a specific end-to-end, -end, like inventory to deliver or order to cash, you can filter by a particular um, end-to-end -end process using those label filters. And I don't see it there. There's also a label for patterns specifically. So uh, if you're looking to see, are there any patterns out there, you can uh, put a filter on for a specific pattern. Um, and as the list grows, using more filters can make it easier to navigate that list. So when we're ready, uh, I verified that it doesn't exist. I'm going to go ahead and click new issue. There we go. So on that new issue page, this is the same page where you can make those catalog change requests. Last week, we talked about the new business process request. Today, I'm going to show you the new pattern or practice um, request. And so you'll click the Get Started button next to New Pattern or Practice. And that's going to open up a new window where it says Pattern. And then you can type in the name of your pattern. You're going to want to copy and paste that. You're going to put in your email address select the type of organization that you work for, which end-to-end -end process this goes with, so design to retire. And then it's important to make sure that the area and the business process are copied exactly from your row. So the area in this case is manage product pricing. So I'm gonna copy that value and I'm gonna paste that into which business process area is this article related to, oops. I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and then the business process is called review product pricing and discount agreements. So I will copy that and we're going to go back to the browser again and I'm going to paste that value into which business process is this article related to and then the name of my pattern that I want this to be is view trade agreements. I can optionally type in any comments that are necessary, type in a date that I estimate this to be uh, completed, click the I agree checkbox. And then once you've clicked that I agree checkbox, the submit new issue button will be enabled. If you don't mark that checkbox and fill in all of the required fields, you won't be able to click that button. Again, you can optionally put in labels for your particular process, but it's not mandatory. And uh, once you submit that, you'll see it um, created in the issue list. And that kicks off an approval process for us here at Microsoft. At that point, you're going to want to wait uh, and make sure that the request is approved. And, you know, we don't have something else in the works in the back end for somebody to author that article already. And then once you're approved, the next step in the process is to download your template. You can get to the template if you're already in the GitHub repository by navigating to the code tab, then clicking on the templates folder, and then clicking on the business processes folder, and then uh, you'll see the L4 pattern or practice template. But you can also get to that by using the aka.ms forward slash business process catalog template. 
And so if you navigate to business process catalog template, it'll take you right into that folder where those templates are stored at. I'm going to go ahead and click on the template for the L4 pattern or practice. And then in the upper right hand corner, you'll see the download raw file button, which looks like an arrow pointing down with like a bracket underneath it. So that's the button you would use to download the, the file. And then um, once you've opened up that document, which I already have open here, you'll notice it's very similar to the template that we use for the L3 business processes, but there are definitely some significant differences in the structure of these articles. Again, we've included all of those instructions in red and highlighted the yellow uh, information, which is the information that should be updated or changed. And we ask that you delete all of the red instructions before you submit your article and uh, make sure that all of the yellow text is replaced or updated appropriately. Once you're done authoring your article and you've saved it according to the name of your pattern, the next step in the process is to submit your article for review and publishing. So to do this, you're going to go visit aka.ms forward slash um, business process catalog submit. This is a new AKA link. We created this after last week's tech talk to make it a little bit easier and all the AKA links are more consistent now, but it is the same exact survey. So if you would bookmark the old AKA link, that link still works, but this is a little bit easier. We hope for you to navigate. So you'll enter in your information. So I'm going to put in my full name. I'll enter in my email address. I work for Microsoft. I've got my LinkedIn profile URL, and this is a new article. So I click next. Then again, I'm going to enter in the title of my article uh, and making sure that I'm copying that from the um, spreadsheet exactly. We, we want to make sure that we're consistent in our naming. So the article title and patterns should always start with the word pattern at the beginning. So this is pattern view trade agreements by customer. And then I want to make sure that I'm choosing what type of pattern or practice this is for. Uh, this is a pattern for a business process. Um, so that's the option I'm going to choose. But I do want to note that we do encourage and support um, submissions of patterns or practices that are related to the implementation guide as well. So if you want to write a pattern that's about data migrations or integrations or performance or any of the chapters in our implementation guide, you're welcome to submit and author those as well. You'll use the upload file button to go choose the Word document. If you have included any graphics or images in your article, then you'll want to include those. You can type in comments. Then it's important that for questions 11, 12, and 13, that you're choosing which end to end your article goes with, and then copying and pasting those values again for the business process area and the business process that your pattern relates to. So you'll want to make sure that the, the value that you're putting in here matches exactly the value uh, from the, the spreadsheet. So manage product pricing. And then my business process was called um, review product pricing and discount agreements. Um, and so I've copied those values from my clipboard. Um, I get an error message because I haven't uploaded a file. I'll go ahead and just upload something uh, simple here. Um, as an example, I'm not going to click submit on this because it's not a real article. Once the Word document is uploaded, you can click next and you'll receive the same tagging screen on the submission um, where you'll tag the products that the article applies to, the industries that it applies to, and the stakeholders. And then when you're ready, you click submit um, and that's all there is to the process. If we have questions, comments, concerns um, about your article after you've submitted it, we will use the contact information that you've provided for us to reach back out. Um, and uh, we'll let you know uh, once that article is published and your article will automatically get published out to the 
uh, guidance hub, which is available at aka.ms forward slash one guidance. All right, so let's switch back. Um, at this point, that is the entire process, but I'm going to use the remaining portion of our session to just talk through quickly the different sections of, of the article and how to fill those out for those of you that like a little bit more detail um, in your process. So I want to start by talking about the structure of a pattern article. Pattern articles include context and problem, which is that story, when to use this pattern, the actual solution, issues and considerations, and related resources. When you're getting started with the template, um, I've included a screenshot of that template here on the right-hand side that you can see. Um, and uh, it's very similar to the process for like the level three business processes as well. Make sure that you name the file according to the name of the pattern. We ask that you don't use spaces and we use nouns and verbs and dashes in between the words with all lower cases when you name the file. If you miss one of these steps, don't worry about it. We'll correct it for you. Uh, but it saves us the trouble of renaming your file if you submit it incorrectly. Save your folder or your files in, in folders to make them easy for you to find. And keep in mind that the instructions are in red brackets throughout the file. And you should delete those instructions after you've completed them and before submitting your article. You'll also want to make sure that all of the highlighted yellow text is replaced or adjusted before you submit your article. And we ask that you not change the plain white text. So I want to talk a little bit about including app source apps in your um, articles. So if you would like to include an ISV or uh, SI solution implementer solution in your article, um, the article must include a link to the app source application. There's also a disclaimer that must be included at the top of the article. That disclaimer is included in the template. If there is no app source app being included in your solution, you can simply delete uh, that disclaimer from the top of your article. And there's instructions in the template to indicate that. Make sure that when you are creating a um, pattern with an app source solution, that you differentiate the solution in the context and problem. Why should a user or a customer select this solution over either an out-of-the-box solution or another ISV solution? Keep in mind that if you publish an article about your own organization's ISV solution, it's possible that another partner with a similar ISV solution can also publish their own pattern, including their solution. So it's really important that you differentiate the solution. We ask that you not include any screenshots of your app source solution in the article. If you like to include screenshots of your solution, we recommend that you include those screenshots in your app source um, submission on the app source site rather than the patterns. We do encourage you, however, to include diagrams, process flows, data flows, and so on that help the user understand how your particular process works. The next section, which is a very important section for your article, is the when to use this pattern. We pulled together a list of tips and, you know, considerations that you can use when you're authoring the when to use or when to not use uh, a particular pattern. In Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation apps, we have a concept of configuration keys. Um, an example of that is like the public sector configuration key. And so if a particular feature or, you know, user case or pattern that you're authoring about is only enabled when you use a specific configuration key, then uh, you should indicate that. Um, if you like catch weight is another example. Like if we recommend that you turn off catch weight if it's not being used and then you enable it. It's especially important if that configuration key is off by default and the user needs to turn it on. Feature management keys are also important, which are specific to finance and operations apps. If there's specific product licensing that's required in order to use a specific solution, make sure that you're including those specific product licensing licenses. And that can be true of capacity as well. So like uh, if there's limitations on how many you can do uh, from a licensing standpoint, um, like if we offer 
um, a thousand out of the box, but then if you do more than a thousand, you need to purchase additional licenses. Make sure that that's included in your when to use and when not to use. It's also important to include like specific modules or feature names, for example, um, especially when there's multiple versions of a particular uh, product. If a pattern is designed for a specific industry, a specific country or region, or um, if it helps meet specific compliance or regulatory requirements, those are all examples of statements or bullet points that you would include. You can also include product versions, but we ask that you only include a specific product version number like 10.0.38, for example, for um, you know, a preview feature or for products um, or versions that are rarely updated. So the next section of your article is um, how we build the solution. Um, your solution should include procedures, which are step-by-step -step instructions um, of how to do something. We always want to make sure, especially if there's multiple sets of procedures, that you write a sentence that precedes the actual step-by-steps you write that indicate what those steps will include. Um, this is important for somebody, especially that uses a screen reader, so that they're not reading all these steps if they're not relevant to that particular reader. Um, so we, we started out with a sentence that's like, use the following steps to do whatever that process is or that task is, especially if you're breaking the procedures up into three or four different tasks. We ask that you only include a detailed step. And when we say detailed step, we mean exactly click here, click here, click here. If a specific value is required in order to meet the scenario of that particular pattern. Otherwise, we want your steps to be written in a generic way, like create a sales order with a hyperlink to the product documentation that explains the step-by-steps of how to create a sales order. But if your example requires or your pattern requires that you create a sales order um, line with a product category, it would be okay to include the exact steps on how to select the product category on the sales order line, which is what differentiates that particular pattern from uh, the normal way of creating a sales order. When you're putting navigation in for a step, make sure that your navigation uses the greater than or the caret to indicate the steps between your clicks and make sure that any navigation included always starts from the home page. An example of when to use a procedure um, is that there's one or more specific steps that need to be included uh, for the reader to understand how to implement that um, scenario. And your procedure should include many generic steps and links to the product documentation that support how to create those detailed or how to execute on those detailed steps. The next section of an article is the issues and considerations. So we've pulled together some tips and tricks, uh, the types of things that you might include in the issues and considerations section of your article. Security is one example. Um, in some cases, there might be specific um, security uh, requirements in order to um, you know, run a particular process or additional steps um, or if security is set a certain way, it changes the way the process works. You'll also want to include any performance considerations. So these are like your non-functional requirements. Not all patterns will have these types of considerations, but we ask you to think about it. You know, for example, if you're writing a pattern or a process related to dual write, uh, performance can be a consideration based on the volume or the frequency that the dual write transaction is is called. So calling that out in your pattern is useful to the reader and a person who would be implementing that solution. And sometimes cost can be a consideration, especially when there might be two options, for example. The most common or easiest example to think of about cost is uh, using a Power Automate flow versus using a Azure Logic app for the same exact process. There's a cost difference. And either solution can work, 
but what's the cost implication of using one or the other? You'll also want to think about if using a particular feature or enabling a particular parameter or the settings that you've chosen had a conflict with other features or products. So like if I use, if I enable this particular checkbox and I cannot do it um, with another feature or another product, that would be important to know. You'll also want to think about restrictions for using a specific feature. Um, great examples of that are like dual write or cross company data sharing, where there's an actual limitation to the number of records that can be shared. Um, you'll also want to think about like option one versus option two. Obviously these are abstract examples of option one and two, but if there's two basic options that you can choose for your particular pattern, um, what's the consideration for choosing option one versus option two? And remember that it's okay to admit the section entirely if there are no issues or considerations. Next, I want to talk about the example section of the pattern architectures uh, or the patterns uh, articles rather. So examples, it's kind of that, that concept that a picture is worth a thousand words. So we suggest that you use examples to avoid duplication rather than making 10 different patterns that are all exactly the same except for one particular step. That's where you can use an example to demonstrate how a specific value can be changed on one step um, without the need to make 10 or 15 different patterns. You can include notes below a step as well in a procedure to show that like use this value for this example and use that value for this example. Uh, so again, it's the slight variations for a very similar pattern. And in another example is like, if there's one way of doing it, if there's only one um, example versus there's many of, of the same value, you might include examples in your article that kind of shows here's how to do it if you have only one but here's how to do it if you have more than one you can also use examples when there's just a slight variation in a specific process step so when we're writing a uh an example we want you to include the story or the use case so you you gave the context and problem at the top of your article when you're adding one or more examples make sure that your example specific to your particular pattern or example that you're including. Again, you can use notes to call out when one step might vary. And we ask that you use real world examples. So if you've implemented this for a particular customer, for example, and it was done a certain way for a specific industry, use that knowledge, that context to provide the how and the why for the reader. But it's really important that you do not share customer information or PII, personal identifying information in your articles, uh, because these articles are published externally. We also ask that you not include any screenshots in your um, examples, um, you know, but those step-by-steps and procedures are encouraged. Graphics are also encouraged um, if they are helpful for the, the data flow um, or a comparison of one thing to another. So finishing your article. Your article will include next steps, tagging, additional resources, and contributors. We talked about these four sections in detail in part three, so I'm not going to review them again. But the instructions for how to fill out those next steps, tagging, and additional resources and contributors are included uh, in the template for both the L3 and the L4. So you can refer to those or part three of our Tech Talk series. I did want to call out because it's probably much more common at level four when we're publishing patterns that a partner or an ISV solution um, is the, the kind of contributor of the article. So when you're adding contributors to your article, they can be either a partner organization or a person. So if it's a partner, then you're going to include the company name. And it, it's okay if the partner is an ISV solution rather than a service implementer, as an integrator. Like um, we don't um, differentiate like the word partner in this particular case. So the company name, and then you can include a link to the website 
of that company or the a LinkedIn company page. Um, and then after the company name, um, you can include a designation to indicate if the partner is a Microsoft Gold or Silver certified partner um, or an inner circle partner with the years as an example or partner of the year. Like those types of certifications are okay to include after the name of the partner. If it's a person, then you're going to include the person name, a link to that user's LinkedIn profile, a job title or similar description. And then it's okay to also include uh, MVP, MCT, or other certifications or awards um, that designate that person. It's also okay if you authored an article and you don't want to be recognized for your contributions publicly. You do not have to put your name on the article, but we do encourage it um, so that people know who you are and it's a great way to showcase your expertise and build your resume as well. I did want to quickly review why resources are important. Resources are what help make our business process documentation and index to all the other documentation and resources that are available out there. We have so many resources that are available. And if you remember back to when you were first learning about Dynamics 365 or you are learning about Dynamics 365, anything that you can do to make it easier for people to learn how to navigate and find information that's relevant makes that process easier. So we encourage you um, to include as many links as possible that are relevant um, to that specific pattern. Keeping in mind that business process documentation is not product documentation. So including those links is important. And put yourself in the audience's shoes and think about what else might you want to learn if you were learning about this particular process. We've included the list of the different resources that are available um, as well. We went through this slide in great detail in part four of our Tech Talk series, so I'm not going to go through it again. But this is a great reference that you can use for the types of things to put inside of your articles. And don't forget, when you're done, you need to submit your article. That's done at aka.ms forward slash business process catalog submit. And then you'll wait for the technical review to happen. If required, we might reach out to you and ask you to make updates if you were missing sections um, or there's significant updates. If the updates are just minor, we'll likely take those updates on ourselves. Um, and then you'll want to wait uh, for that article to be published. And then the last step here, it's important. Remember, evangelize your articles. It's all for naught if you wrote an article and nobody reads it. So make sure you share your article on LinkedIn and let your customers and peers and colleagues know about the hard work that you've been doing. And don't forget that we do have Credly badging uh, coming very, very soon. So keep an eye out for an announcement um, and our new um, badge badges, I should say, that we'll be announcing very soon. Um, and anyone who contributes um, will be receiving those Credly badges. We're going backwards to the beginning. Uh, so don't wait for the announcement to contribute. Um, you, you will receive credit for any work that you've done. So with that, that wraps us up today. We have pulled together a list of additional links and resources that you can use. I've um, given a number of these links today throughout our presentation. So these uh, links is just a consolidated list of all of those links that you can use. And we invite you to stay connected with us. If you're not connected with our fast track page on LinkedIn or the uh, Dynamics 365 community page on YouTube, and make sure to subscribe to upcoming Tech Talks at aka.ms forward slash D365 Tech Talk subscribe. With that, we are going to open it up for questions. Eva, did we have any questions that we needed to address? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Rachel, for this speedy uh, tour of um, uh, business process related patterns. One question is, where do I find a user story or pattern, for example, for soft reserving in inventory in uh, finance and operations with inventory visibility couldn't find that in business process catalog oh that's it's a great question it sounds like we may be missing something i would expect that to probably be in inventory to deliver end-to-end -end process so if you think that we're missing a process or a pattern what i would ask you to do is um 
go to the aka.ms forward slash business process catalog requests and create a, a for that missing process or pattern. Thank you very much, Rachel. Then there's a question. We have BPMs already with industry specific patterns use, using task recordings. When BPMs are deprecated, will there be a mechanism to migrate that content to a pattern or article? Great question. So um, task recordings are not going away. And the business process modeler that is available in LCS, as we know, like all of LCS is being deprecated. So our team is working right now on a new design to support task recordings in a new model. Um, and so what we're looking at is a way that our business process catalog can be the the link in it, like whether that lands in the Dynamics implementation portal or the Power Platform Admin Center or somewhere else, we're still kind of determining that. You will still have a way to link your task recordings to a business process catalog. Um, you know, it just won't be the APQC catalog that is available in LCS. As a part of this project in the LCS business process modeler replacement, we're also looking at what type of migration mechanism we can have for partners that already built their own catalog in LCS to the new mechanism once that's available. Um, we're still, you know, pretty far out before that happens. Like, um, I suspect it's going to be like October timeframe of this year, but we haven't even put anything in our release notes yet. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for more information and details about what we have planned around the BPM in LCS and kind of its replacement. But it is top of mind for us. We know that we have to come up with something new and we're trying to make sure that the new a version of this is is better and supports more broadly our customer and partner needs in terms of how they leverage the tools for process modeling, process mining, process monitoring, um, and test automation related to processes as well. So um, we're we're trying to think through all of these different aspects and components of it with our new solution, um, and make sure as well that it works across. CE and FNO applications because today it only works for finance and operation apps, not the customer engagement apps. That's a really good point. Thank you, Rachel. And one final question. Once approved, where will these articles be accessible from? Who will be able to access? And yeah. I responded uh, with posting question. a link to the landing page for business process patterns on the Microsoft Learn site. Yeah. So it's a great question. And if you missed part one of our tech talk series or part two, part one, we introduced the guidance hub, which is that aka.ms forward slash one guidance. And so we kind of walk through some of that at a very high level. Part two of our tech talk series, um, we, we went into even more detail about that. So if you missed part one or part two, I do encourage you to check that out and you can learn a lot more about the guidance hub but they are available publicly for anyone um, to uptake those articles. Um, and so it's a great way as a partner to showcase your expertise or as an individual um, and build your, your, your resume and um, your network out there. If you're an aspiring MVP, for example, contributing to these articles is a great way to get involved and all of your contributions, in addition to counting towards credibly badging, count towards your MVP status as well. That's another really, really good point. Uh, I will say that on the Microsoft Learn site, we have the Azure Architectures Center. And if uh, any of you submit patterns that we believe uh, fit that uh, the uh, Azure Architectures Center, then we will also make the um, article available there. That's a great point. Yeah, so that's kind of like you get like double exposure in both the Dynamics documentation and the Azure Architecture Center documentation. So so again, right, we do invite you uh, to fill out our survey, the QR code that you see on screen and the link, Eva has pasted that link in the chat as well. We do invite you to fill out that survey and give us your feedback um, about today's session. Um, we appreciate that feedback and it helps us improve in the future. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, and hopefully we'll see you on our next Tech Talk Part 6 in February.